This week on Rams 360. Early control of the NFC West is at stake. It's about to be a war. Whoever fights the hardest is going to win this game, bro. Stafford on platform. Spins one left side. Outbreaking route. 2-2 two, two goes to get it proud of our group. I think a lot of the things that we didn't do at the level that we're capable of, they're fixable things. And Just having that example of the work is never enough. It's been fortunate to have a great example. All this and more on Rams 360. Early control of the NFC West is at stake. Week two here in Inglewood at SoFi Stadium. It's about to be a war. Whoever plays the hardest, Play the fastest, play the most together, gonna win this game, bro. No, I got some dogs with me. What a measuring stick opportunity for the 2023 Los Angeles Rams after an uplifting triumph in the Pacific Northwest. Now they're home open. Hey, y'all know what time it is, yes, sir. It's time to set the tone. Uh -huh. This is our house. Yes, Let's leave it right here. It's better than any electricity in the world. I'm telling you, this is it. But the mess just got through. There's not a single person down here smiling. This is 49er week and what this means to this football team. They're ready to play. Even the staff has game faces on. So they're about as ready to play as they can possibly be. Let's see what their best looks like against the Niners. Let's go, man. It's that time. It's that time. Locked in focus. Laser focus all day. Come on, baby. Fast, physical, and aggressive. Make you finish play. Love you, too, too. This Rams defense bow up and force a field goal try. Rams bring the blitz. Purdy from the pocket, throws right, smothered. Kobe Durant step for step with Brandon IU. And heavyweight bout. Heavyweight bout. Keep your gloves on. Keep hunting. I love the rapport of that group. I love the way that they play for one another. I love the energy and the edge that they play with. I think we want to just be able to continue to stack blocks. Rams bring four. They get there. They hit him. He escapes. Byron Young in pursuit after knocking Purdy off his platform. The Rams rookie class gets to Purdy. I thought they did a great job. I thought they really tightened up. I thought they did some really good stuff in the second half. But I thought the overall effort, the engagement, um, the edge that they played with, I thought that was there throughout the course of the game. I was pleased with those guys. Stafford in the shotgun. Has the snap. It is a catch by the back. It's Kyron. Untouched to the end zone. How about the blocks by the Rams offensive line? And Kyron Williams hits pay dirt again. Yeah! Yeah! What a start to year two for Williams. Let him know, two, three. Let him know. I thought he did really well. I thought, I thought he had great command of what was going on. It's about just staying in the moment, being able to play one play at a time, and then being able to handle the ebbs and flows. You know, it doesn't always go perfect really pleased with Kyron overall. Snap back, handoff, gun run, Kyron. He fights for it, he's got it! Kyron Williams, touchdown, LA! The Rams offensive line flexes all over the 49ers and gives LA its first lead of week two. I love it, man. Oh, I know you do. I love it. I love it, hey. So snap back from the logo here. Blitz coming, Stafford well protected, throws left numbers, complete Puka, spins away from one, inside the 40, fighting for the 35. I love Puka Nakua. He did a great job, you know, he's tough, he's a physical competitor, I thought that showed up. Um, he continued to battle all the way through the end, I mean, he's the epitome of what we want to be as Rams. Puka's going to continue to improve and love Puka. Put it on the number of Puka Nakua, what a load. He deals, left side, Puka's got it. 50, 40, 35, and a first down LA. It's Nakua Matata. No <laughs> uh, worries. Warriors, Warriors. I like the resilience of this group. Love the look in these guys' eye. I like the way that they continue to be able to compete through the finish. And these are always learning opportunities for us. You know, some of these adversity presents opportunities. Um, and I'm excited to be able to, you know, go forward with these guys in the right way. And, and I have no doubt they're going to do that same thing. I thought there was great energy. I thought there was great effort. I thought there was a physicality and a toughness that we played with. And then, you know, there was a turning point in the game where you just look at it. a couple of the bounces of the ball, which are sometimes things that are just totally out of your control that didn't necessarily go in our favor.
Oh, good evening and welcome to this edition of the Coach McVay Show presented by Microsoft Surface. I'm J.B. Long, DeMarco Farr, the head coach of your Los Angeles Rams, Sean McVay. The Rams are 1-1 one and, one and looking forward to a Monday night trip to Cincinnati. Uh, Sean, not all losses are created equally. How do you differentiate between one like yesterday that maybe leaves most observers feeling like it was another step in the right direction for your Rams. Yeah, I don't think there's any moral victories, but I think a lot of the things that we asked of our guys against what we know is a really high caliber team, I thought that was brought to life in the game. I thought there was great energy. I thought there was great effort. I thought there was a physicality and a toughness that we played with. And then, you know, there was a turning point in the game where you just look at a couple of the bounces of the ball, which are sometimes things that are just totally out of your control that didn't necessarily go in our favor. And then there was a couple opportunities for us to be able to communicate and execute that, you know, we just missed on them and, and it ended up leading to a flip. But there was a lot of opportunities in that game that were created by our guys. You give credit to the 49ers, but I was proud of our group. I I think a lot of the things that we didn't do at the level that we're capable of they're fixable things and um, I'm excited about being able to move forward the right way with this group I, I know they attack the process the right way I love working with this group just because we didn't get the result that we wanted it doesn't change any bit of my feelings my optimism my excitement to go back to work and that's how I felt right after the game that's how I felt waking up this morning and that's how I feel sitting here talking with you guys right now crazy when the ball bounces away you you have to keep pursuing because eventually they'll start bouncing to you. Yep. You just got to be there for them. No question. Yeah. And that's where you do have to really commit to the process and spend your physical and emotional energy on the things that you can control. And what are the things that we can fix? What are the things that we did at a high level that we want to continue to do and continue to replicate? But um, I loved a lot of the things that I saw, and I'm encouraged by a lot of the things that I know we can do better. And uh, certainly I'm a part of that as well. I, I, I did learn something, the, yeah. the moral victory. It does – have weight to it you do feel better leaving that stadium because you took them to the wire but it's only as good until you start watching the film and then you start saying dang you might have let one get away yeah i think you look at where those are you don't ever want guys to press you know mm -hmm. but but you do want to understand where the execution opportunities within the framework of a game when hey you know you're up you're in a 17 17 game and there's five six minutes left in the third quarter and you get a run from the 25 that ends up putting you inside the 20 that gets called back for a holding well is that a hold what can we do to try to avoid that with some of the calls and the communication based on what they activated defensively um, you know how can we look the ball in so we prevent a, a tipped opportunity how can we make sure when we get the ball and we're down three on that next drive that we eliminate some of the communi communication errors that would have probably led to better overall execution instead of going three and out and then you end up mm -hmm. going down 10 at that point um, but there was a lot of there was a lot of things that when you look at it you realize against a really good team like that your margin for error is really slim mm -hmm. um, and, and then there were some things that you say it just didn't go down for us the way that we wanted, but let's focus on our process, um, our standards, the way that these guys operate. And I, and I absolutely love this group. And like I said, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about moving forward and attacking the things that we can improve upon and looking towards getting ready for Cincinnati. After a game as physical as that one, how are the Rams health-wise looking forward to week three? Yeah, we're doing good. You know, guys came up, you know, guys were banged up a little bit, uh, but don't expect it to affect anybody's game status for the Cincinnati game. Joe Nopum had to leave, got a good shoulder, you know, bruise. And that sounds bad. It was, it was like a deep contusion that he ended up getting. And I thought Tremaine Ancrum came in, uh, stepped in and did a nice job. But, um, you know, for the most part, our guys battled. They competed. That was a real physical NFL football game. Two good teams going at it. And, uh, you know, you're going to have your typical bumps and bruises. But uh, fortunately, we'll have an extra day to be able to kind of get turned over and recovered this week. Yeah, contusion sounds better than bruise. Yes. Yeah, he's big. Right? He is. He's yeah. a stud. Yeah, when you're 300 tough. pounds, is contusion, not yes. bruise, that stuff. No, uh, but I thought the O-line took another step. That's a really good front coming at you. And for the most part, Matthew Stafford looked almost the same as he did in Seattle, playing the same way, getting the ball out, scrambling. Yeah, I thought Who he Who said he was a job. statue? Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought he played excellent. That's why it's unfortunate a couple of the plays – um, you know, it's an unfortunate tip. I, th I thought he was seeing the field really well. I thought he had great command. I thought, you know, his movement, his understanding, his ability to progress. And, you know, I, I, I can't say enough about how well he's played, how much he's elevated guys around him over these first couple of weeks. But, you know, minus a communication error uh, where, where the, the sack and, and you give them credit for, you know, creating those errors. Um, 
you know, the, the, and, I, and I just think the way that they play, I thought there was a couple guys that really shine bright, so really pleased with Jonah Williams. I thought mm. he did an excellent job uh, battling. Bobby Brown showed up. You know, Kobe Turner continued to show up. I, I thought really our front seven as a whole, uh, Merch only played six snaps but did a good job. I thought Hoyt and Byron Young from the edge. Ernest and Roseboom made their presence felt. You know, I, I thought against a physical outfit, I thought our safeties did a nice job being able to get involved in the run fits, but I was pleased with our defense as a whole. A lot of pride in playing for their teammates. I mean, you know those teams that you were a part of that were special. It was about not wanting to let your brother down or whether it be letting your teammates down or your coaches, but there was a connection. Um, there was a togetherness. When you break it down and you say family, it actually meant that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what this group's got. Let's get to Cincinnati. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're saying it's hard to say whether Burrow's even going to play. So we'll leave that for another day and just leave it at the right. I hope he does. Let's yeah, go. We need to prepare for Joe Burrow. <laughs> for Sean McVay, for DeMarco Farr, I am JB Long. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Coach McVay Show. Not yet at 100, but soon. Presented by Microsoft Surface. Coming up next on Rams 360. <laughs> You are watching Rams 360. Go, stud. Love you, man. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. Two, two. Play fast, physical, and aggressive. Make you finish play. Play, two, two. Let's go. Go. it down right. It is a catch by the back. It's Kyron on touch to the end zone. Yeah! Yeah! And put another drive up, man. Let's go. Let's go. One out of time. Stafford launches left side. Caught at the 35 by 2-2 two -two Atwell. Handoff, gun run, Kyron, he fights for it, he's got it! Kyron Williams, touchdown! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Hey, great catch, bro. Yeah. Cowboy, baby. You're playing big, little man. Yeah. You're playing big. Strong, aggressive great hands. Time. Strong, aggressive hands. Keep going, keep going. Blitz coming. Stafford well protected. Throws left numbers. Complete Puka. Spins away from one. Inside the 40. Fighting for the 35. Puka Nakua after the catch. 14 and a first. Yeah! Yeah! Stafford on platform. Spins one left side. Outbreaking route. 2-2 Two -two goes to get it. At the 50. No, he was out of bounds. Oh, he was robbed. Hey, that was it right there. Yeah, appreciate you too, bro. I mean, just name the year. I mean, there's new challenges every single year. Um, but getting cut that first year and then going on Peace Squad and playing against our offense every single day was probably the best develop development that I've had. Welcome to this week's Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long, and excited about our guest, a 28-year-old defensive lineman who has been with the Rams since 2020. Can't wait yeah. to hear more about uh, his story, his incredible journey to Los Angeles and to the NFL. Jonah Williams making his first appearance. How are you? Good. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
Thanks for stopping by. One thing that hasn't changed the ethos of dog work. And every time someone in your position group comes into these chairs, I want to know what that means to them and, and how they explain it to those who could never understand what it's like on the inside. Well, I'm super fortunate to have Aaron Donald, who's, you know, the best hands down, just the best display of that dog work mentality. Mm -hmm. And I have to give him a lot of credit for just setting that example of what it means to to live that life. I mean, the kind of guy who who does all the things that the team asks him to do with the lift and the, the meetings or whatever. And then you see the second, you know, the second level where he comes in after practice and does extra work or does extra things during the during the lift or, you know, the stories of what, you know, what he's doing at the at the house, more stuff. So just having that example of like the work is never enough. Like there's just always more to do and um, it's been fortunate to have a great example show me show me how to do that. I love seeing someone like him side by side with someone like you and the different paths that you took to the same 100%. position group. Let's go back to Rocky Mountain High School. Is it yep. Meridian, Idaho? Yep. Only one offer coming out of, of high school. So let's talk about how we got there. You were a tight end until your junior season of high school? Yeah, I, that's, I was all over. So I actually lived in Washington until the middle of my sophomore year and moved to Idaho and I was playing a couple different positions. My body hadn't yet like grown. I mean, I was going into my senior year or during my junior year, I was about six foot, like 190. I was, I was smaller than I am now. And I grew like four or five inches, 50 pounds my senior year. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started and you know, the coach like, no, you're gonna go play D-line. That was right before my senior season though. So I'd been practicing tight end all summer and they're like, no, you don't. I don't know what it was, you know, I just wasn't good enough, I guess, to tie it in. They're like, just go put them on D-line, which they do with a lot of people that they don't <laughs> want to have in, the, in, the, in, the, in their groups, whatever, I don't know. But they moved me to D-line, so that's how I transitioned to it. I read a quotation from your defensive line coach. I believe his name is Todd Roberts from the, yeah. uh, the Idaho Press. said, no one gave yeah. him anything. Jonah earned everything. How did you earn it from that point to where you became all state in just over a year's time? I just... I think just going through the system through middle school and high school, I was never that guy on the team. Like I was always considered never good enough. And so complacency couldn't ever sit in. Like it just, I was never given anything. So um, finally, when I got that opportunity, uh, I got a little bit my junior year. I still didn't play that much football my junior year. Probably took five, 10 snaps a game. And then, um, my senior year, I got a starting role as D end. And I think it was just, I knew I was still young at the position. I didn't have a lot of technique. So it was more just have the motor hmm. and I just run and try as hard as you can. And um, it paid off. And the obstacles that you kind of overcome here just continue because right around the yeah. corner, once you're done with, as a collegiate, um, your pro day gets canceled by the pandemic, yeah. right? And, yeah. and with it, probably the chance to get drafted, even though your measurables seem pretty good yeah. uh, with where you were that spring. Your first off season as a Ram is remote. Uh, I'm just looking on the list of things, waived, released, claimed, failed physical, practice squad. Like you've yeah. been through just about everything 100%. the NFL has to offer someone in yeah. your position. As you look back, what was the hardest obstacle to overcome? Just... There's too many of them. I mean, every year, I know that first year coming in after after COVID was tough um, because I was expected to basically come in as a new body type, you know, an extra 20 pounds and then play a new position at D-line. Um, I played more five tech, six in college, came in here, I was playing four, three, two, my, my second year in the league, uh, Bobby Brown went down, so I had to play zero and shade and so just, I mean, it was tough. I mean, Andrew Andrew Whitworth was who I was going against in camp. Made me grow up quick with just all the savvy vet stuff that that he was doing. So, I mean, just name the year. I mean, there's new challenges every single year. Um, but getting cut that first year and then going on Peace Squad and playing against our offense every single day was probably the best hmm. develop development that I've had because you're taking. 30 to 40 plays in a Wednesday, Thursday, you know, practice. It's like, it's a P squads game day is doing those practices. So developed a lot and 
learned a lot from the vets, you know, on the O line, uh, beating up on me. So, um, for sure, that was the the biggest challenge coming in. But there's I mean, there's challenges every year. So, yeah. Jonah, good to meet you. Congratulations yeah, on uh, your role with this year's team, hard Thank earned, you. and the young family that you're raising as well. Appreciate Thank you. getting Thanks for having to know me. you a little bit better. For Jonah Williams, I'm JB Long. This is Rams Revealed. Coming up next on Rams 360. Stay tuned for more Rams 360. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next week for more Rams 360.